You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNC. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back to the program, everybody. And thanks for staying tuned in to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Again, weekday mornings, 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. Learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Also, all shows are streamed here live in studio. So on the uh, homepage of Tampa Bay Radio, if you click on the Watch Live Stream button, you can see us here in studio. And also, all the uh, videos are put up on demand on my uh, YouTube channel. Just head over to youtube.com forward slash Jamie. Maloney, and you can see all the uh, show videos all the way back to my start of this show on February 2nd. Also, please connect with me on all the different social media sites, facebook.com forward slash that business show for show updates and previews of upcoming shows each and every uh, morning. And also, please uh, follow me on Twitter. Jamie underscore Maloney is my uh, Twitter handle over there. Time to bring on my next guest for the show. Dr. Lisa Coach is medical director of Spectra Wellness Solutions and is always focused on finding the cause of complaints instead of just treating symptoms with medications. Her practice, located in South Tampa, uses cutting-edge methods and is dedicated to utilizing the best of both traditional and integrative medicine. Dr. Coach, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. So first off, tell me a little bit more about your background. Well, got exposed to medicine at an early age, unfortunately. Was diagnosed at age 15 with leukemia. Oh, wow. Had three years of chemo in high school and then had to have two more years in college. Um, Got through it pretty well, considering was obviously treated with traditional medicine at that point. Um, My family was traditionally based and I had chemo and was basically treated up in New York, even at Sloan Kettering, had some of the best traditional medicine I'd offer and I'm here today because of that. Um, But you know, at that stage kind of had a lot of questions in my mind, like why? I felt okay and here I am sick. And so when I went through medical school, kept asking questions as to, okay, well, why are we doing this? And really was kind of dumbfounded because nobody really had the answer. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit more of this is how it works and this is what we do. Um, so I set out to try to get some of those answers myself. Okay, and you practice uh, integrative uh, integrative medicine uh, today. Tell me how that differs from traditional medicine, what you were just citing there in your initial story there. Well, I, I, I actually practice both, which is what I think makes me kind of unique okay. because I, I trained in general internal medicine. So I have... A traditional training, I went to Emory Medical School and stayed there for my residency. Um, So I went down to USF for my residency, but really enjoyed Emory for undergrad and medical school. And throughout my residency in internal medicine, I I picked up a lot of great things that traditional medicine has to offer, and I still provide all those services. But I kept searching for basically something to fill in the gaps, because I would look at these people who were sick or had problems, and maybe they were overweight but eating really fine, or maybe they had high blood pressure, but they worked out every day. So... Why are these seemingly healthy people having disease? Is there an area of medicine that you practice in uh, regularly that you see the integrative approach uh, that works better than the traditional approaches that the uh, traditional medical doctors are employing, whether it's weight loss or um, chronic pain, things of that nature? Uh, Talk to me about how traditional, uh, where traditional is advantageous versus integrative is advantageous. You know, I think that's a great question. I would say traditional, like by itself, predominantly for acute care, you know, if you have, God forbid, pneumonia or a heart attack, you need traditional medicine. We've got amazing things that we can do to heal people in traditional medicine category, land, all of that mm-hmm. in the hospital. Um, although there are now integrative hospitals coming up in China and other places, which is kind of exciting. But more for the day-to-day lack of vibrance that I see where just I'm not as vibrant as I used to be. I'm tired. Um, you know, I feel like I can't get the weight off. Um, I can't sleep, a lot of stress and anxiety. Um, You know, the meds, a lot of times, traditional medicines that traditional medicine provides for these issues just don't work. Mm -hmm. So often people will come to me because they've actually exhausted all of those options. What are the traditional methods of treatment for the the lethargic feeling? I mean, because all of us middle-aged adults get that, you know, the men, the the lower sex drive, the the depleted energy. I mean, first of all, what's the traditional approach to that? Is that the testosterone replacement therapies? Um, I would say, you know, hormonal treatment, both testosterone for men and bioidentical or traditional hormones for women Mm -hmm. is something most physicians will at least consider um, if you're at a certain age with fatigue. But I mean, I see fatigue with kids in high school, so it's not always just hormones. Mm -hmm. So I'd say a traditional approach would be a full panel of blood work, really looking for disease. So you're looking for hypothyroidism or anemias or iron deficiency or some kind of autoimmune problem or inflammation that may be causing the problem. 
the issue comes in not only if they find something, which sometimes the treatment helps the symptoms, but sometimes it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can even make it worse. But it's when they don't find anything, which I would say is probably 75, 80% of the time. Right. You know, people will go in, the labs are normal. And that's really all we have. Mm -hmm. And so what is the alternative approach then if the traditional method is not working with, you know, cases of lethargy and lower sex drive things? So what are some alternative (laughs) approaches that you can take? Well, the good news is there's more and more coming out every day. Um, So I had to figure them out to heal myself because traditional medicine wasn't helping me. It got through my initial issues, felt like I was doing well, had my daughter, which people weren't really even sure I could get pregnant. And then I crashed again, more from a fatigue standpoint, autoimmune disease with my thyroid, some psoriasis issues and traditional medicine. I went to be a good little patient (laughs) to the (laughs) endocrinologist Mm -hmm. and felt no better Mm -hmm. on Synthroid, for example, which is the typical thyroid treatment. So I ended up going out of the box, getting trained in more integrative medicine, learning about some other tests you can do. So the answer is there are some other tests, anything from salivary hormonal testing to stool kits, um, to look for what's going on in the environment in the colon, to some food allergy panels. But I also was able to find a technique called applied kinesiology or muscle testing, which is very integrative and definitely not yet evidence-based science. Um, but it has been able to fill in a lot of those gaps for when somebody comes in and says, I just don't feel right. We can get some guidance on maybe what else may be going Applied on. kinesiology, I was talking about that, with that during the uh, break. I remember going to a chiropractor and they were doing a muscle testing and they called it applied kinesiology where they laid me down on the table and they said, all right, push against my hand and I couldn't do it. And then they would do an adjustment on my back and then all of a sudden I could do it all of a sudden. And there's like a, you know, something with the spine. Is that, but you're using this term differently with your well, practice, right? The, the, the concept of applied kinesiology is that you have your physical body and then you have an energy field around your body and that the two are connected. So the Chinese work on this energy field all the time. They talk about their chi, they talk, Indian cultures talk about chakras. This energy field is connected via a muscle reflex. So you can literally try this at home where you can have a spouse, a friend, push on your arm, pull your arm, put your arm straight out at a 90 degree angle, have them push on you, you'll be strong. Then introduce something negative into your energy field. You could use something like a Diet Coke or your phone, which has some radiation. When it's held up next to your body, literally a weakness is elicited in your muscle and you will not be able to resist. Is this stuff for real though? I mean, do you practice this and see this in your everyday practice? Because I remember going through this and thinking, all right, they're just trying to sell me on additional chiropractic care here. Yeah, and I I, absolutely, that's the initial response I had as well. So when I was first exposed to it, it was a a girlfriend of mine who was going to close her practice because she was so tired and nobody could help her here. She went to Arizona. They said there's a guru right in Clearwater, found him. He and I ended up teaming up because he had practiced this he had practiced this technique for almost 40 years and was able to teach me. So I, I just kind of do some very basic evaluation to show people. And it does look like a magic trick when you first get exposed to it. It's probably the same doctor I went to because it was in Clearwater where I went. I went to them because I was having severe lower back pain in my early 20s. And I went to the neurologist. The MRIs revealed degenerative discs. And they're like, you need spinal fusion surgery. And I was like, oh, man, I'm 23 years old, man. I want that. Mm-hmm. And so I started searching around for alternative therapies. And I came across VAX-D, vertical axial decompression therapy. And I went to the clinic. And it was a four-week process where they laid me down on a table. And they strapped this harness around my lower uh, my hips or whatever and they pull my back and relax pull relax and the idea was that it would draw nutrients into the discs when the pressure was taken off the discs and it would allow them to regenerate i did that four weeks straight monday through friday and it was like a 30 minute session and it did work i mean to this day i rarely have lower back issues and so i definitely you know believe in you know alternative treatments because the traditional medicine wanted me to uh get spinal fusion surgery which would have limited my mobility and would have been detrimental to my future health but when i went to the the facility they took me through an intake procedure and they did all these applied kinesiology techniques and everything so i just thought they were trying to sell me on additional stuff yeah well you know when you start really understanding and studying integrative approaches a lot of it does involve nutraceuticals um, herbs homeopathics and other vitamin therapies and this is actually a way not to sell you more but to sell you less because we're able to match the supplement and or therapy more specifically and individually with your body. So instead of going to Whole Foods or you know a, a GNC and buying out the store because you ha- you're trying to match your symptoms, we can actually narrow it down. 
Now, in the, in the last point you're making just a, a couple minutes ago, you mentioned food allergies. What are some common food allergies that people have that they may not know that they have? Another great question, and the answer is by far and away gluten. Um, it's not a fad. Unfortunately, the way that it's being produced right now in this country, I'd say 75, 80% of the population is reacting. The issue is that it's a reaction that's not obvious. So it may be puffy face, can't get my ring off at night, kind of foggy headed. And gluten just came onto the market. I don't know about the actual, but the t- main talking point as a, as a health uh, issue, like four or five years ago, I remember when I was a kid, I never heard of gluten. And uh, every seven, you know, five years, it seems there's a new health issue that, you know, makes mainstream, you know, health, you know, well, weight loss, uh, things like that. I mean, but gluten, is, it, is there something different in the way pr- foods have been, are being yes. produced now? Yeah. And, so it's not like everybody all of a sudden it became allergic to it. It's the way they're manufacturing the, the crop. But it's also a combination of numerous things. So you have people who have had you know, exposure to tons of different chemicals, at, and they're in the environment. We don't know what's going on in the air anymore. We have heavy metals. We have lots of stress. And so you throw a bunch of different issues on top of a now manufacturing problem with the wheat, and it, most of it stems from your gut. Mm-hmm. So antibiotic overusage, Advil's, Tylenols, alcohol, processed food, messes with the gut lining, it's less stable. And then gluten or other foods that should be processed appropriately in the, in the gut are actually slipping into your bloodstream. In short, what is gluten? Is that related to wheat products or where is gluten coming from in our, in our yeah, daily it's wheat, products? Wheat flour. Wheat so flour. It's mostly pasta and bread and then cookies, crackers, cakes, processed food. Is there any solution to a treatment of a gluten allergy other than just removal of the uh, the diet or removal of it from your diet? Well, I mean, you always would want to try that first. So I suggest almost anybody who's listening to try to cut it out of their diet for about two to three weeks and then challenge it by eating it again. But it seems like it's in everything, right? I mean, it's in No, mother. you can still have, you know, rice and sweet potatoes and there's a lot of like cracker and snack things that are gluten-free. Um, eating really whole foods, so eating lean meats and proteins and tons of leafy green vegetables, any kind of vegetable, you know, fruits are fine, nuts and seeds. And I believe that, uh, can you hear me? Okay. okay. I believe that the real test is when you want to really try to see what uh, life without gluten-free will do to your body, it's absolutely zero gluten-free. There's no like, oh, just tonight, let me do it because it will cancel out everything, right? Is yes, the, the antibodies, the so the antibodies, which is the body's reaction to the gluten, they take about two to three weeks of complete avoidance for them to go away. And that's, how, that's why I tell patients to really commit to it mm-hmm. because you can see things like joint pain, foggy brain, fatigue, lots of vague symptomatology get better. And in severe cases of a gluten allergy, it's celiac disease, right, where they have severe, I mean, what happens when people have celiac disease? What's going on there? That's when the gluten has caused damage in the intestinal tract. So it's less common. And, and, you know, just because people don't have celiac does not by any means mean that they are not reacting to gluten. Mm Mm-hmm. No. Great discussion. You got to take a quick break, uh, but coming back from the break, I'm going to be talking a little bit more with Dr. Lisa Coach, uh, owner and medical director of Spectra Wellness Solutions. Learn more about her and her practice at spectrawellness.com. You're currently listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Help promote the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy. Tune in weekdays at 8 a.m. on 1250 Wins WHNZ to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where he promotes what is right with our community and highlights the successes of our entrepreneurs. Show contributor openings also available. You can learn more about the show and how to become part of this growing network at tampabayradio.com. Tune in weekdays at 8 a.m. to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage wants you to experience the thrill of one day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12 day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger and Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger and Company comes to you with their shop at home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bathroom. 
craft design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets. And all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727-347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 727- 347-0305. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Fastball from the left-hand lane of westbound I-4 just before MLK. Also had some accidents out on the Howard Franklin Bridge. They're all off to the right-hand side and traffic looking a whole lot better if you're heading towards Tampa. Still some delays on the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Eastbound near Rocky Point. Southbound veterans still very slow from Gun Highway to Waters. And a crash on southbound Dale Mabry, just south of Hillsboro, and eastbound Hillsboro, just past the veterans. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and New York Hillsboro Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by Boys and Girls Club of America. It's 3 p.m. School's out for America's kids. And when school's out, clubs are in. It's time to support the Boys and Girls Clubs. Visit greatfutures.org. Today, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, high 90. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 77. Tomorrow, a 50-50 rain chance, high 91. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNC. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Again, weekday mornings, 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. And as always, I extend an invite to any and all my listeners out there. I'm always looking for content, material, guests, and partners for the show. If you have any interest in uh, becoming part of the show, please message me. best way to get me is through my contact form over at tampabayradio.com. Currently talk with Dr. Lisa Coach. She is uh, the medical director and owner of Spectra Wellness Solutions. Learn more about her at spectrawellness.com. And uh, Lisa, you're telling me uh, during the break, uh, you've got a number of different uh, programs, but uh, a new program that you wanted to talk about to the uh, listeners, a ketogenic uh, program. Uh, talk to me about what this is. Well, I had been searching for a way to kind of condense a lot of our total body healing into a 12-week program. So it's kind of a jumpstart trying to over really reboot your body. So we look at your gut, hormones, insulin, thyroid. We try to detoxify a little bit. And truthfully, I'd been looking for the nutritional component for the past couple of years. Um, always believed in gluten-free, as we were discussing earlier, but I was trying to find something that really got me excited because I don't have a weight issue. Um, you know, having two shakes a day, a meal, two snacks kind of seemed about the same old type of way of eating, not exciting. And when I started researching ketogenic diets and ketosis, I got very excited because I found that the lead researcher in the basically country and maybe even the world happens to be here locally at USF. So his research is being done on rats and he and I have teamed up. We're gonna be doing some clinical trials but the concept of ketogenic diet and ketosis is utilizing fat as your primary fuel instead of carbohydrates. Okay, wasn't this, I remember the uh, Atkins diet used uh, the idea of ketosis. First of all, explain what ketosis is to the listeners. So your cells have a choice for fuel. They can either operate off of carbohydrates and glucose or they can operate off of fats and ketones. Um, it actually, at 
the basic level at the Krebs cycle where you produce energy, either one can enter into that cycle. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about utilizing fat primarily instead of what everybody uses, which is carbohydrates because they're easy and everywhere. Adkins was the first to really make it public, um, although these diets have been around since 1920 or frankly even since ancestral times. Um, in 1920s, they were utilized for epilepsy control in children, and they're still used in epileptic populations because they control seizures. Um, but when Adkins came out, there were a couple of issues. Um, number one, he was predominantly replacing the carbohydrate intake with protein. And if you take in too much protein, it actually turns into carbohydrates. And if any of you have tried it, you're starving. So it doesn't really satiate. And long term, it leads to heart issues if you practice that over well, a long period you, of time, right? If you if you eat too much protein and not enough good fats, so he was also not being clear enough, I think, on what the fat intake had to be. Mm -hmm. So this type of approach still includes some things that may make you nervous, like eating things that we haven't eaten. Grass-fed butter, for example. Grass-fed butter. What taking a look at it, it's butter, but it comes from grass-fed cows. Uh -huh. And what we're finding is that when you look at these types of saturated fats, instead of this, oh my God, a heart attack is coming, it's actually showing in the lab, at least in animal models, to decrease that risk because your body is using the fat for fuel so it doesn't have a chance to build up in your arteries. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting research. In the, in the rats, they found production of brand new mitochondria, Mitochondria is what makes you feel good and vibrant and energized. Mm -hmm. So right now, the people that really are utilizing a ketogenic diet are athletes and really sick people. So for me, I said, well, I want to be an athlete. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet because I had heart issues from chemo, but I want more mitochondria. Mm -hmm. I don't feel totally on my game every day. So I brought this diet into my own life and experience and have noticed really improved cognition, so more focus, more energy, more satiated so you're full instead mm -hmm. of where's my next meal going to be right um and what we're doing is collecting data so that we can be sure that it's safe as long as you get in enough good green leafy vegetables very small amounts of fruit and we have to monitor min different minerals magnesium potassium so what we've done is incorporate this into our 12-week program so we can watch the patients more carefully as they transition I, I do remember being in a consultation with you i don't know if you remember that and i look yes. at you and i interrupted you or I forgot and I, I told you what is it with you you're so focused there's something I'm seeing in you that I don't see in people and so that's how we started talking about fat and it's it's kind of surprising because it's uh, we being told that you know to reduce fat mm -hmm. and so it yeah, was the brain I could you... see the like what it does with you as you know someone around you yes well and it's kind of funny I'll tell you the very first time I got exposed to it I was at a conference usually these conferences they go from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. I'm sure most of people listening have been in some of those before and they served this coffee with the grass-fed butter and oil in it and I don't even I didn't even really drink coffee but I had it because it tasted good and normally by three or four I'm done you know my brain is full I, I count it I chalk it up it's been a good day and I'm done I was like Four o'clock, bring it on, just completely focused. So that is one of the number one exciting things. Right. You also find yourself wanting to work out. You just have more energy. I right? noticed when you were describing the program, you didn't talk about any meds or any type of uh, supplements or anything. Is this strictly like a consultation where you're saying this is what you need to do? Um, so we have two tiers to the program. There are definitely supplements recommended. And what we do is when the patient comes in initially and we're offering free consultations in the office, um, we're sitting down with them, going through a questionnaire and reviewing, having them get some blood work to review. And then we're, we can either start them on the basic program, which is predominantly um, the meal-based information and meeting with either myself or my nurse practitioner, along with some basic supplementation injections, but they're specialized for fat burning, electrolytes that you have to have. Um, and then we'll individualize what other supplementation is needed based on your personal and is this recommended for people of all ages? Is it, is it ever too young to implement this type of diet or what? Oh, I think it's a great question as well. Um, I think with kids, it's tough. So if you have a very athletic child who is not going to be able to get the amount of fat and they need for fuel, that's probably not somebody who you want to go on a ketogenic diet like a high school athlete. Um, but in terms of ages, I mean, any adult, I would say predominantly 18 all the way up. Okay. Well, we got about a minute left. Uh, Dr. Coach, real quick, uh, where is your practice located and how can people get some more information on your programs? Um, we're right in Hyde Park, um, 
on right near Swan in Armenia, and you can go to our website at spectralwellness.com. All right, sounds good. Dr. Coach, I greatly appreciate you stopping in. A great interview today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, and also thank you to co-host Stella Giudicelli in with me today, as always. Thank you, Stella. Thank you. And also thank you to uh, Lorena Ludovici and Carrie Gaylord, attorneys with Gaylord, Merlin, Ludovici, and Diaz, about an ex- uh, with, with their conversation earlier in the first segment about eminent domain and condemnation laws. Great discussion with them as well, so thank you to them as well. And you can learn more about them at gaylordmerlin.com. Well, it's Friday, so it's uh, one more rest of the day here to the weekend, and I hope everybody has a great weekend, and I'll see you back in here Monday morning at 8 a.m., and be sure to visit my website, tampabayradio.com, to keep up to date with all the uh, show happenings. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you back in here Monday morning.